Mmm. Mmm. <gasps> we will come back to these later. These Gan cubes are expensive. I can't just be throwing them around like I usually do. Well, thanks FedEx, you did my job for me. It's the Gan 12. From 11 to 12, we have cut off two syllables in the cube name. Wow, amazing innovation. It's beautiful. Wow, I can feel it. Is this UV coating? Is that why it's so shiny? Okay, let's get into first turns here. Oh, what? I am... I've never felt anything like this. What the heck? Pardon my terrible turning, because... Wait, the magnets are really weird. Yeah, you can kind of hear it. What? 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 How? how does this... Ah! Wait, can this cube be misaligned? Oh, oh, what? So if I push it all the way here, it's just not gonna take it. Oh, that's okay, but let's move it slightly over. Nope, nope. This cube doesn't like being misaligned. Oh, wow, that's insane. I don't think any cube has gone this far and just decided to snap back on its own. Wait, so you literally can't have a slightly misaligned cube then? Oh, you can. It's like magic. All right, but is that a good thing? Probably, um, if I can get used to it. The turning, turning still feels kind of messed up. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, <laughs> the slice turns are gonna need some work. Wait, I'm getting used to this. No, I'm not. Yo, Gan12, stop. I'm trying to test corner cutting, but you're not letting me because it keeps snapping back. Okay, so is reverse corner cutting like it's still gonna happen in solves, it's just a lot harder to test it because I have to hold it in place or it just jumps back. I can still test normal corner cutting though. Let's go 45 degrees. Yep, a little more than that. I'm scared it's just gonna snap on its own. And even more, this shouldn't work. Yeah. Okay, this is, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> and keep in mind, this is the maglev version. There's also a leap version, which is, I guess, a bit toned down compared to how different this is from most cubes. But we'll see the difference later when I get to it. I want to check out the core in this. One to six on the outside, and the three notches here, here, and here tell you which number you're on, so we are on two right now. But there's also this inner part. Let's see if pressing down and turning will remove everything. Oh, ah! All right, here we have the two main components, both with a magnet in them, and this way they repel, but if I turn it the other way, they will just attract. So inside the core, these work exactly like a spring, because when you try to push them together, they will try to force themselves apart. And inside the top component, this is like a little staircase over and over. This piece with the numbers goes on top of it, and you can also see the teeth underneath it. And all of this sits underneath what is basically a screw head right here. Ooh, my second set of AirPods. There's a bag, love the color. How to solve the cube and how this system works. This is what I need. Ah, uh, hope you can read Chinese. Video instruction, minimum center tray. Okay, I, I can't take this. I'm just gonna go to the Chinese side. I was fooled, it wasn't AirPods. This tool is a bit confusing and let me show you what you have to do with it before you can adjust anything. So you try to pull it apart, not too hard and just turn it around until you find a part where it snaps out. Once you find that, pull a bit harder, and then you'll have the tool more rigid instead of being really floppy, and this is how you're supposed to use the tool to adjust the stuff inside the core. Technically, this is covered in the instructions, but it's just, it's just too much. Now, once you've elongated this tool, how to adjust the numbers around here, which is for screw depth or centerpiece travel, is you put it on like this, and then you turn clockwise, but very, very gently. And then you just look at this little hole right there to see what setting you're on now, and we are on two. As you turn, make sure that you are gentle and not pushing down, because if you push down as you turn, you could end up removing the whole thing. And you can also adjust the tension or the magnet repulsion force, which is the same as spring compression in a normal cube. And how that works is by using the three-pronged side, and then you just push down and turn it. When you get to the loudest click, that is the lowest setting or the weakest force between the magnets. In other words, this is the most flexible setting. And then as you turn, you're going to get to more and more stable settings until 
you get the loud click again and that's back to the lowest. It's hard to tell what setting you're on just from the magnet distance, so that's why you have to rely on the sound. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really like this system. I find it very confusing. You can't even see the numbers as you adjust it, and you can't tell visually what setting you're on for the tension either. Something like the Moyu system is actually so much more straightforward just because the screw, everyone already understands how that works, and the blue thing around it, it is very easy to look at the teeth and count to see exactly which setting you're on. Right now it's on the lowest. This cube is ready to be dummy fast. Oh my, that's a weird feeling when you're doing a double flick, but after the first one, your second finger can't really catch up fast enough, and it's almost like I'm doing a single flick. How easy is a YouTube? Oh, that's, that's so easy. That's just like a regular flick. How about U4? Oh, wait, that was a U6. I guess it's time to jump inside the cube and see what the deal is with the magnets. Whoa. They basically just took the old corner decor magnets and asked what if we made the magnet really long. More magnets, always better. If you can't have more magnets, just have long magnets. So there are the magnets inside the core and you can see that the magnet from the corner almost touches it. Like it's really, really close. And we can see what happens during a full turn. So at 45 degrees, the corner magnet is right in between the core magnets, which means it doesn't really interact with them. But then as soon as you start to almost finish a turn, like let's say right here, then the corner magnet is almost touching the core magnet already, even though it's still quite far from a full turn. And I guess these magnets are really strong or something because it just snaps everything into place. I guess this is one way to show how strong the magnets are. Now you can actually remove these by turning and pulling them out. And there are more in this box. These ones are hexagon shaped while the ones that it comes with are triangle shaped. And I don't know which one is stronger. Looks like the hexagons are stronger. Well, that's good that it tells you here because in the GAN 11M Pro it didn't and no one could figure out which one was stronger. And finally, at least I hope finally, is the magnet adjustment. This changes how strong the magnets are between the corner and edge pieces and there are three settings. Right here there's a minus on the left and a plus on the right. So the strong magnets would be on this side and I don't think I'll be able to move it back. Wait a minute. Yeah, I don't think I received anything to help me change the magnets. The thing I got before was this. This is a very small flathead screwdriver that makes changing the setting extremely easy. The instruction says to use this thing. Okay, really interesting. We're gonna give it a shot. Oh, it works. Well, it works, but I don't really like it. I really prefer the screwdriver. There we go, that's much easier. Of course, there are way too many settings here for me to try, so I'm just gonna give my first impression, which is that this cube, when I'm turning well, is really good. Um, I just noticed some weird catches and I'm not sure what exactly is the cause of that. If it's the magnets on the inside, that could be a big problem, but if it's just the cube not um, being on a great setting, then I can fix that. What I definitely don't love about this cube is it is $78. Maybe that'll change, I don't know, but this is the most expensive cube there has ever been. Well, like the most expensive normal 3x3. Although the good thing is it at least justifies its cost by introducing a bunch of new stuff, and I think this alignment system is incredible incredibly cool. Now, I'm just trying it for the first time. I can't tell you how much I'm going to need this in my solves if it's really going to help me, but just having the stuff to play around with is amazing because who knows, this could be like the next big thing in cubing. Or maybe I'll just learn to turn accurately and it'll be completely useless. Okay, we have the GAN 12M Leap as well. Wait a minute, this one was not GAN 12M, it was just maglev, even though this M means the magnets between the pieces and this one means in the core. Cube names never make sense. Wow, FedEx destroyed the box, but at least it was for the Leap and not for the Maglev, because the Leap is the cheaper one and therefore the worst one, right? That's how cube prices work. Oh yeah, okay, it already feels different on the outside. This cube has frosted plastic, which is different from the UV plastic on the Maglev, but I'm just gonna do some turns first and talk about that later. The cube feels a bit lighter, maybe a bit easier to turn, but um, I'm actually just Wondering about the magnet system. It doesn't feel like there's that same magnet system in this one. Oh, there is, but not as much, apparently. I gotta say though, the leap feels a lot more like a normal cube. I don't feel like the magnet system is really doing as much as it is in the maglev one. Maybe I'm used to it. 
I don't know, this, this, this just feels completely different. All right, let's take a look inside and see if it's actually the same thing. Yeah, it's pretty much touching as well. It's got the same system, it looks like. There's also the magnet adjustment, the bag, this customization, and looks like everything's the same. Inside the core, it is definitely different in here. Ooh, turquoise. So let's quickly figure out this adjustment. Uh, springs. That's the big snap. So it also has six settings and we're gonna go for a turn on this. Yeah, it feels the same. The Leap uses springs and the Maglev uses magnets, but the most important thing to remember is my customization system video is still right. It doesn't matter if it's maglev or springs, it works the same way. Take that innovation, my video is not outdated. And it will never be outdated. This one is on all the same settings as the maglev, but it does still feel different when I turn it. It feels a lot more normal, like most cubes, but I think the reason is probably just the speed. Since maglev having less friction makes it a faster cube and this one is a bit slower, I think this uh, magnet alignment system takes over with with a bit less force uh, in terms of how much I can feel it. And also the frosted plastic. Frosted plastic feels a bit softer and has less friction. Meanwhile, for the maglev, the UV is a lot shinier. I love the way it looks, but that's not important. It is higher friction and feels a bit strange at first if you're not used to it because most cubes nowadays are frosted plastic. I actually don't mind the feeling of either of these. I think UV looks better, but if I had to use frosted, I'm fine with it. The only problem for me with frosted is when I use it for long enough, rubbing my fingers all over it every day, it eventually becomes glossy plastic. A lot of older cubes were glossy plastic and I'm used to it. It is not a problem of being used to it. It is just that when I get nervous, such as in competitions, the temperature or sweat change makes it so this feels completely different. Frosted doesn't have that problem. UV doesn't have that problem, but Frosted can turn into Glossy, which has that problem. So leading up to my review, I'll be doing lots of solves on this and trying different settings, and I really hope it's good because this is this is just so cool. If you want to buy this, you can go to speedcubeshop.com and choose between the Leap and the Maglev version, and make sure you use the discount code JPERM. Ooh, what's this? Mystery Cube? Why would I order something if I don't know what I'm gonna get? I went on Speedcube Shop and ordered a bunch of Mystery Cubes. I figured some of you guys might want an idea of what types of things you can get. And the thing is, you can pay a different amount for the mystery cube and you will always get something worth at least that much. So we're not really gonna unbox these, but I'm gonna show you what I got. This is some Chi 2x2, I, I don't even know what it is, but you can see from the bottom, this was the $3 mystery cube and what do you expect with $3? Here we have another 2x2, this is the Rubik's Speed Cube. This was for $5 and it's worth a lot more than that. No, 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 it costs a lot more than that. I don't know if it's worth that much, but the Tough Tiles, the Effortless Turn, I had one of these, I don't know where it is now, but I put it in the sun for a long time and the tiles didn't fade. So there you go, that's worth the money. Hope you can read Chinese. I got a Weilong WR and I think maybe not magnetic, $15. I don't want a non-magnetic cube for $15, but if I do get one, this is one of the best ones. This is a $10 GAN cube. I didn't know that was possible. It just says GAN cube. What, what even is in this? What? I'm so confused. I don't know what this could be, but I guess that's the fun in this. Uh, let's find out. Uh, it's been too long. I can't tell. Okay, this is a really old GAN cube then. Oh, it's not even magnetic. Wait, is this the GAN Air? This was my old main, wow. I don't even know if I still have my old one. I might've lost it. I think this was my last main before I switched to magnetic cubes and Gan used to have the circle thing and the green used to be this bad. Okay, these two, obviously these two are worth it. We got a Gan 11M Pro and a Gan 11M Duo. How much did this cost? 25 and $35. Wow, that combined is not even as much as the Gan 11M Pro. I don't need to open these. You guys have already seen these. They're great cubes. And then I got a Gan I Carry. How much did this cost? $20. So there you go, mystery cubes. If you're into it, then go for it. If you're about to hit the shipping price and you just wanna add something, go for it. I should carry this around with me. So anytime I'm feeling lost, I can just remember I am GAN12. Remember to check out speedcubeshop.com as always. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.